uh, we learned this kind of approach in the last lectures, uh, in previous lectures, and so we cannot assume that the ST is U and E to the zero mod T. The ST has uh, some um, magnitude and the oscillating terms E to the zero mod T because this system is composed by the mass and uh, only mass as spring. Therefore, we uh, imagine intuitively this system is oscillating. Therefore, we set the solution as this form. And the difference equations become algebraic equations like this. Well, we put this form into these equations, then we can obtain this kind of form by eliminating this e to j omega t, and then uh, we can obtain minus omega square n plus k, and uh, u equals zero, and to get a non-trivial solution. Non-trivial solution means u equals zero. We have uh, the, so the this equation, the matrix of this equation, I mean the determinant of this matrix has to be zero. The therefore, uh, we obtain the characteristic equation by uh, obtaining the determinant of this matrix for omega as, as like this. And we write the components we uh, present the matrix as a component and we can write this uh, matrix form then the determinant of this matrix is uh, written by uh, this equation and rearranging this equation then we can obtain the characteristic equations of this system and by solving this uh, equation we can obtain the omega square equals 3k of n or k of n. This one is the natural frequency, the scale of natural frequencies. Uh, but this process is, is straightforward and we already uh, learned from the lecture. Therefore, I uh, reviewed very fast here. And now, the, the, uh, we obtain the four solutions. Omega 1 equal plus minus square root k of m and omega 2 equal plus minus square root 3 k of m. Then uh, by plugging into this uh, natural frequency into uh, this equation, then we can obtain the mode shape vector u1 and u2. Uh, yeah, then we can write the algebraic equation like this uh, into for each uh, natural frequency and uh, each mode shape vector u1 and u2 and now uh, for first natural frequency omega 1 square uh, we obtain the mode shape vector u1 applying the uh, applying the first natural frequency uh, into this equation, then we rewrite the matrix at this form, and we uh, rearranging and eliminating the terms, and we obtain the, this kind of relations. Then, then the relation u11 and u21 is obtained like this, and we can obtain the u21 over u11 equal one. This means U21 moves the same direction with the U11. This U11 is the motion of mass 1 induced by the natural frequency 1. The system is induced by the natural frequency omega 1, the, and the mass 1 is moves unit displacement, then U21 is also unit displacement. Uh, to the same direction of uh, mass 1. But uh, as you can see, we, we only obtain the ratio between these two uh, mode shape vector. Therefore, we just know the direction and the magnitude ratio. We don't know exactly how the magnitude is. That's important. Uh, in other words, we can see 
the direction and middle to the ratio from the mode shape vector. And next, for omega 2 square, we can obtain the same procedure. Then we obtain also this kind of relation between u22 over u12 equal minus 1. This means when we uh, force this system with natural frequency omega 2, the motion of mass 2 is moves opposite direction to uh, mass 1 but have the same magnitude ratio. Finally, the mode shape vectors are obtained like this. U1 equal 1, 1 for first natural frequency and U2 equal 1 minus 1 for uh, second natural frequency. Yeah. And now, we already assume the solution form as like this and we obtain the omega and u. Therefore we have four solutions. The plus plus minus omega one and plus minus omega two uh, and each uh mode shape vector. And the system is linear. We the all model we consider in this uh course the whole system is linear, therefore the superposition of the four becomes the final solution. The final solution means uh, with this solution we can express all the motion of this system. Uh, yeah. Therefore we com we step the response, uh, the superposition of these uh, solutions. The A the we don't know the magnitude, therefore we a e to the j omega one t plus b e to the minus a omega one t as uh, according to mole shape vector u one and etc. And by Euler's formula, we can obtain the familiar form. I mean the sinusoidal form is obtained like this. And there is a uh, also four unknowns. This this is a b c d are uh, unknown and this w in this case is A1, phi1 and A2, phi2 are unknown. And we already know omega1 and u1 and omega2 and u2. Uh, these unknowns are obtained by the initial conditions, four initial conditions. Uh, the initial conditions are displacement and velocity of each mass. That means the displacement and velocity of mass 1 and displacement of velocity of mass 2. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me during the class. And let's see the example uh, for more clear understanding. Let's consider an initial displacement case. That means we have only uh, initial displacement on mass 1. X, S, S, 0, and the others are all 0. Then we can write xt as like this. Uh, this equation is from, from this one. And we, uh, we uh, this is the vector notation that this is the uh, uh, I denote the components uh, in this equation. And we put the initial conditions into this equation. Uh, at t equals 0, and we can obtain the x1. Uh, let's see first the velocity condition uh, for uh, this equation. The x1 dot 0 equals 0, or 0, and the t, when t equals 0, then the remaining thing is phi and phi one and phi two. Okay. This, uh, because this one is velocity, they have a uh, uh, <coughs> frequencies in front of this this class. Uh, then summing up these equations with respect to column, then 